Hello Internet, Big Dave here and I am cheap. How cheap? Well, I'm so cheap that I only paid something for Gish. It's another game from the Humble Bundle, a bonus game from the Humble Voxatron debut bundle, Gish. Gish comes to us from Cryptic C. Cryptic C is a two-person studio consisting of Alex Austin and Amy Seaver. It was a late addition to the bundle. Uh, you only have uh, three or four days left as I'm recording this for the bundle. Gish was a bit of a late addition, a bonus game. Cryptic C looks like an interesting little company. They've got several small games, some browser stuff. Uh, they're, they're, uh, Gish seems to be their main game that they've developed so far. It's their main one that's out for purchase on Steam. Uh, they also seem to be developing some sort of a, th a crude looking 3D game. Uh, I'm not really sure too much about it. I, I perused their blog at Cryptic C blogspot.com uh, but wasn't able to get a real good sense of exactly what that game is or what it's about so uh, let's take a look at gish now uh, full disclosure i've already played some gish uh, i already attempted to record this video with gish i tried to use the keyboard controls anytime that a uh, a game seems to be calling out for a keyboard or for a controller i always try it with a keyboard and mouse i feel that that's a real uh, a real jumping off point to start from how does this game actually perform with a keyboard and mouse of course we've had some great performances and uh, I've also encountered some games that play horribly uh, the one that comes to mind for sure is Rusty Hearts so Gish it didn't work all that well with the controller so uh, w or with the keyboard so we're gonna go to the controller unfortunately I wasn't able to change the controller on the fly so uh, I had to go in and actually quit out of the game and at that point it was just too much I had lost too much time and I was out of the groove so we're gonna start over brand new fresh start here with Gish let's go ahead and put our name in as I hunt and peck I suppose I don't really have to put this name in uh, I could put anything but I'm stubborn uh, so we're gonna start out with a new game and we will look at the story of Gish what he is what he's all about and who this black-lipped woman is here in the center of our screen Gish isn't your average hero. In fact, he's not your average anything. See, Gish is a bowl of tar. While on a Sunday stroll with his lady friend Bree, a shadowy figure emerged from an open manhole, pulling her away. These aren't moving fast enough. and into the ground below. She's got some cleave on her there. Look at that. Right there. Quickly, Gish jumps into action. I don't know how to advance these. I don't want to hit anything. Following Bree's calls for help, suddenly Gish finds himself in the subterranean sewers of Dross. A long forgotten... Oh, fuck that. Let's get into, let's get into this game. Enough cutesy shit. I'm in a cursy mood today, guys. If you don't know, I had some oral surgery, and uh, I'm on the good medicine right now, so uh, I probably shouldn't be making this video, but what the hell. Okay, so uh, very unhelpfully, it is giving me the keyboard and mouse controls, uh, so I'm just going to have to figure out... Uh, okay. Okay, B is, B is jump, A is sticky. Um... Y is heavy and X is slippery. Okay. So here we go. We need to go into slippery mode to get down through here. So these are the, uh, you know, these are the main things that the game uses. Your, your, um, your, your, I don't want to say gimmicks. Um, they're your control mechanisms. They are your, uh, uh, they are your f facilities by which to solve puzzles. Uh, so you can press A. This feels a lot better. I'll just tell you right off the bat, this is about a thousand times better uh, with the with the controller than it was with the keyboard and mouse. The keyboard and mouse controls were very unresponsive in places, and it made it extremely difficult uh, to navigate in many instances. Uh oh, there you go, doing this like a pro now. 
Uh, it made it extremely difficult to navigate in some instances, but uh, right now this is working uh, so much better. So much better, let me tell you. Um, I'm stuck. Now the one thing I have noticed with the sticky ability is that you, you do kind of tend to pick up pick up some issues. You know, here I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to the ground and I'm sticking to the wall. I think what they really want me to do here is um, like jump or learn, you know, like learn how to jump. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. I absolutely could not. I tried to pull off that jump with the keyboard and mouse for 30 seconds and I could not do it. We'll make ourselves heavy and then slippery. So you can kind of see the dynamic of the game here. It's real, uh, you know, this is a real simple tutorial that's kind of teaching us uh, how everything works. So let's make ourselves... Now, I would say in retrospect, I probably wish that A was the jump button. But I, I'm not really going to complain uh, too much about that. And it's fully configurable, so I would really have no right uh, to complain in the end. Uh, I could change that control if I so desire weight ourselves down. I like the little weight face that he makes. Err, err. And we have completed World 1-1. One, one. Very cool, very cool. Let's move on. Alright, there's got to be a way to advance the game with the joystick. There certainly must be a way. No, there's not. Okay. And again, not a way. Not a fan of that. I've got to reach out and press something. Not a fan of that. Okay, so here we go, here we go. And if I sound a little weird or I pronounce some words strange, again, that is that oral surgery that I'm recovering from. Oh man, I'm doing a whole lot, man. I will tell you, it is night and day. Um, what happened? What happened? Okay. For some reason, the right shoulder button pauses the game. All right. But it is night and day, I mean absolute night and day, uh, the difference from where I was with this game, trying to play it with the keyboard, like, you know, just trying to ever touch this game with a keyboard was a mistake. Uh, this game plays beautifully with the controller. It, it did not play anything, anything like this with the keyboard. Um, yeah, it's, it, is a, it is a complete an utter travesty how badly this game played with a mouse. Oh, I probably don't want to get in there. Okay, and I was right. And slick it up. That's heavy. I'm gonna slick it up, slick it up. Shoop, shoop, shoop. Down into the sluiceways, into the sluiceways. Oh, we got an enemy, our first enemy. I wonder how, I wonder how a 12 pound ball of tar kills an enemy. Hmm. Um, not like that. <laughs> oh, that's, that is great. He's attached to me. I wonder... He doesn't... Yeah. No. Um... Ow? Yeah, now I wonder, can I jump and can I, can I get heavy on him? There we go. Very nice. Okay, cool. And I like that they didn't, like, they didn't spoon feed that to you or... Maybe they did and I just wasn't looking. <laughs> but they didn't spoon feed to you kind of how to do that. They just said, hey, oh, look at this. Here's an enemy. You probably want to uh, figure out how to kill this guy, right? And you guys will probably remember I was very impressed by that, uh, by Nimbus for having that sort of a tutorial style. I really liked that uh, in Nimbus. Okay, I'm just, right now I'm just having trouble finding the right key at the right time. And I know later on in the game, you're probably going to need Twitch-like responses, and uh, right now I ain't got them. Okay, so now now I can, now that I've learned that the R shoulder button uh, advances the, it pauses the menu, it also advances the screen. So that's exactly what I needed to know. Okay, I crushed something. I don't know what. All right, well, best to just leave that and move along. I was going to say there's no breath meter, but then again, I am a 12-pound a ball of tar. So, um, hmm. So my natural instinct is to try to just 
float across, or, uh, make it across. Apparently my natural instinct is to go against my natural instinct, because my natural instinct was to try to avoid that by going along the roof, but instead I just fell, ooh, crud. Oh, I'm like losing little pieces of myself, that's funny. I guess that's, yeah, so when I hit, yeah, when I hit, in the upper left-hand corner, I guess my little mass indicator goes down. <laughs> that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool, I like that. Okay, there we go. So I see there's kind of a, you can kind of create a jump if you hold down and you kind of go up. That's cool. Okay. Very, very cool. It's a little bit awkward with the controller when you're upside down like that to kind of figure out where your hand needs to go. But that's a small complaint in the grand scheme of things. And they are kind of demanding a little bit more of you now. Um... Oh, crud. Cruddles. Cruddle sticks. Okay, come, come on. Oh, now I'm stuck. Let, let go of it. I don't want to... Okay. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a predicament. Okay, there we go. Now let's get back up here. I'm having to... Oh, good lord. Okay, let go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so again, here we go. I got, a, I got a lot of... Ooh, I'm losing my... No! There we go. Okay, so there's... I'd really... I'd like to get up here. Man, I just... I keep grabbing that damn thing. Okay, there we go. Look at that business. Oh, look at that. I totally did that on purpose. That's what I'm gonna say. You guys, you guys believe me, right? I'm a very believable person. I say I did something on purpose, you can trust that. Like this, I'm doing this on purpose right now. This whole thing where I can't get up here to save my life. There we go. And we're back at this again. Now this is, this is annoying. I'll, uh, I'll say that. There we go. Okay. Okay, okay. So uh, let's talk about Gish. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. I'm sure that this game gets uh, more complex and it, it gets to be a lot of uh, a lot of cool platforming, but I, I can't really afford to make this uh, episode very long because of, of my old mouth and uh, my gaping wound within my five stitches holding my poor gums together. So uh, we'll just, uh, as we, we head through uh, level 1-4... Uh, we will just sort of talk about the game, wrap up the game. Uh, so Gish, all in all, what do I think about Gish? I think it's a very, very fun concept. Uh, oh my lord. Um, I think it's a very, very fun concept. I really, really like the concept of the game. Um, I'm having trouble getting jumpy. So I really, really like the concept of the game. Oh my god. Like I did that on purpose. There we go. I really like the concept of the game. Unfortunately, I think there's a, a little bit of rust in the execution. Um, ow. Uh, I think the execution could be a little bit tighter. Um, because you are moving in, in up and down and, and you're constantly sort of rejiggering yourself, sometimes controls, I think, become a bit of an issue. There we go. Yeah. Sometimes control becomes a bit of an issue. I am finding myself at times, um, eh, you know, uh, at times I am a little bit iffy on the controls on what I, sh what I should be doing at a given time. Um, you know, all in all, though, I really, uh, I really like the concept. I think it's, uh, it's one of the more interesting independent concepts that I've seen lately. Um, you know, there's been a lot of cool things come out like Blocks That Matter, uh, even Voxatron. Uh, but this is a nice little take on platforming. It gives you uh, multiple ways to solve problems. And uh, it really gives you a little bit of freedom in that. I mean, uh, platform games are never going to be open-ended. They're never going to be anything but linear for the most part. Uh, but this game gives you some freedom in order to make, uh, make some interesting choices. What do I want to do? Uh, how do I want to try to approach this? Like, for instance, there, I probably could have made a much better choice on how to approach that, uh, but I did not. Ow. Well, at least that didn't hurt. 
take that. You've been crushed. Uh, now let me tell you about one thing that's going to be changing here at Big Davis Cheap. Ever since I started Big Davis Cheap, I've always given these games ratings, five bucks out of five, all that stuff. I'm, I think I'm going to stop that. Uh, I've been thinking about it a little, uh, and you know, pretty much every game gets a four out of five or a five out of five. Uh, I, I think I would have to encounter a broken game to give it much less than that because these are independent games. You know, I don't want to be this harsh critic, and I would never want to say something about one of these games that would end up causing you to not. Uh, go out and give one of these a chance if it looks cool to you. Um, I'm not here to influence you in that way. I just want to show you the games and I want to show you me seeing the game for the first time or telling you about my experiences with the game. Uh, so I'm going to stop giving ratings on these games. Um, it was always sort of, it always felt sort of unnatural uh, in the first place, but you know, after thinking about it, and in particular hearing Total Biscuit talk about it in one of his recent mailboxes, uh, you know, he sort of, I don't want to say convinced me, um, but I sort of saw the light. I understood what he was saying, and I understood kind of why, why giving ratings is, I don't want to say not a good idea, because I think ratings have their place. But I'm not playing enough of this game in a 15 or 16 minute video to conclusively give you a rating. Now my rating has always reflected a value system as opposed to the quality of the game. I've never said I'm rating this game's gameplay a 4 out of 5. I've always said I'm rating the value for money at a 4 out of 5. But as I've moved forward, that system has become much more difficult to maintain. Uh, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. How do I... Uh, how, okay, I just recently got... Uh, Red Faction Gorilla for five bucks. How do I compare that to this game as far as a value for money? Red Faction Gorilla was a AAA title in its day when it was originally released. How can I possibly con compare that to an independent game like this? The answer is I can't. So why create a rating system uh, that even attempts to, uh, oh my lord, that even attempts to compare the two things? I mean, these games are vastly different. Uh, and, 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 that's good. Um, you know, you want variety, and oh, these things keep coming after me. Of course you want variety in gaming, I mean, variety is a fantastic thing. So why why am I even attempting to rate these games? And, and you know, as I say, uh, uh, Total Biscuit is one of the guys that I watch. I mean, you know, as I've said before, I blatantly stole the uh, first impressions idea from Total Biscuit. So, uh, you know, his words kind of spoke to me on a certain level, and I realized, you know, I have two problems. Number one, I don't play these games enough to give you a real rating on them. Uh, and number two, how do you compare a game that once cost $50 but I found on sale for 5 to a game like this that retails for, for $10 and I, f I got free as part of the Humble Bundle? It's just impossible. The rating system then therefore becomes irrelevant uh, because it doesn't truly make any real comparison. Uh, it just becomes a case-by-case -case basis. So a, a 4 out of 5 is not a 4 out of 5 is not a 4 out of 5, and it should be. If you're rating something, if IGN is rating a game, uh, a 9 out of 10 should be a 9 out of 10 should be a 9 out of 10, but I don't even know if IGN uses a 9 out of 10 rating system. That's how little I look at their stuff, but you know, that the rating should have meaning, and if the rating doesn't have meaning, why are you giving the rating? Um, a value for money scale is is just not going to work when you're comparing games that have such vastly different. I don't think I can stick to this very well. That have just vastly different value levels. So uh, so yeah, I'm not going to be giving Gish a rating, and I won't be giving any future games a rating. So I hope you guys have enjoyed Gish. I hope you all got your humble bundles. Therefore, you are playing you are playing and enjoying your free copy of Gish. Ooh, okay. I don't know what I did to make that happen, but I did some. So uh, I hope you're all enjoying Gish, but because I hope you enjoyed the I hope you purchased the humble bundle. All right, guys, I'm going to quit rambling because my God, I just turned a 15 minute video into a 20 minute video, just flapping my gums, flapping my stitched, bleeding, painful ass gums. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.